All right, so I am reviewing the Oralau Human Anatomical Spine model, and I have to be completely honest here. I've been trying for years to come up with something very similar, a model very much like this, so I have a tiny bit of sour grapes that they beat me to it, but I can't be too upset because they did a really good job of it, and there's a lot of things to like about this model, along with one kind of error that we'll bring up as we go, but essentially we've got a one to 1.5, slightly enlarged, kind of a copy of the lumbar vertebra here, another lumbar vertebra, and the intervertebral disc in between, and contained within is the intervertebral disc, and what I especially like about this is it's designed so that when I squish it, we have the herniated nucleus pulposus replicated going out and pushing on one of the nearby nerves, which would cause radicular pain, and the pain that's associated with sciatica and other conditions like that. So. That's really great. I love that it's showing how the nucleus pulposus herniates, especially since it's going posterior laterally, not straight posterior during flexion and side bending to the affected side, although you can make it work on the other side. I think I've had a little more difficulty. There we go with that one. So that's awesome. Now, my major issue here is that we've got the lumbar vertebra, but the spinal cord here is not showing the lumbar conformation. Essentially, the spinal cord has pretty much dwindled away at this point in the uh, lumbar region, and we would have not a complete cord with roots exiting at each level here, but we'd have the cauda equina. We'd have various nerve roots collected going through here, and here's the part that's a little bit challenging. If this is the nerve that's exiting at this level, in real life, these nerves exit near the top of that intervertebral foramen. So when it exits, this herniation doesn't really affect it as much as it affects the next nerve down, the one that would be, shall we say, at bat, that's coming in this way. So in general, if this was the, let's say, L3, L4 vertebra, and we have the L3, L4 disc here, the L3 nerve here that exits at that level would not actually be as affected as the one below it, the L4. So that's one issue here. Now this conformation where the impinged nerve is at the intervertebral foramen next to this disc, that is true in the cervical region, but these are very clearly representing lumbar vertebra with the size of the vertebral bodies and so forth. So again, I have a technical issue here, but in terms of cleverness, five out of five, I think it's a fantastic model to show how the, nucleation, the nucleation of the um, intervertebral disc and the nucleus pulposus actually occurs.